So I am Blake Neffendorf. I'm with the City of Buda, and I will be moderating and also presenting at our uh, next panel, which is uh, on AMI, Advanced Meter Infrastructure. Uh, I'm going to introduce uh, a couple of my panelists here shortly, and they'll go through their presentations, and then we'll circle back around and um, hopefully have a good conversation and answering questions that anybody has on, on AMI and implementing it. Uh, but before we get started with Jeff's presentation, um, Marcin, if you will pop open the first poll, the initial poll that we have. So we have a question for everyone, just kind of gauge, gauge where everyone's at. Uh, does your water provider have a customer portal? So we'll give you a few minutes, or maybe not a few minutes, but maybe a minute or so to answer that question. All right, Marcin, whenever you think we're ready, see the results. So, no, my water provider does not have an automatic meter, does not have an automatic meter infrastructure. So, is the winner um, by, a, by a little bit of a margin. It uh, looks like overall uh, the answers were no. Uh, by 53%. So this will be good. We'll, we'll hopefully be able to provide you with some uh, some good information, some do's and don'ts that, that we experience on, on implementing customer portals in AMI. And uh, with that, I will invite Jeff uh, Koska to, to share his screen. And while he's doing that, I will give a little bit of background on Jeff. So Jeff Koska has worked within the utility business since 1985 and has previously worked for the Trinity River Authority, City of College Station, Kingsland Mud, Lake LBJ Mud, for taking his current job for the past 12 years as Director of Utilities with the City of Horseshoe Bay. He has a BBA in Economics and International Business uh, from Sam Houston State University, and also a Leadership Certification from the University of West Virginia Darden School of Business. So with that, Jeff, please take it away. Can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. All right, good. Well, uh, I have to apologize. Uh, the uh, allergies have got the better of me this morning. So I am going to push through this and hopefully y'all be able to understand me. Uh, but uh, thank you for introducing me. Um, thank you for having me here. And uh, I'd like to go through this presentation, which my presentation is uh, how we have developed an effective customer leak detection via AMI. And so, you know, we kind of think of this, you know, generally as out of the box when I saw this and I figured this is kind of helping our customers think outside of the fishbowl because uh, we're in the water industry. The reality is, is that we needed to do some things more proactive than the way that we've done things reactively. And so, um, we have developed this program and I will walk through it for you. Get it to work here. Okay. Okay, so talk a little bit about uh, City of Horseshoe Bay. Horseshoe Bay is a lakeside community. Um, it is uh, a relatively new community. It was created in the early 70s. Uh, it just became a city in 2005. And uh, so we've just a city, 16, 17 years, and um, have a community that is really extensively landscaped. Uh, we have a lot of high-end homes. We have our average home sizes around 4,000 square foot, but we have houses up to 16,000 square foot on our lake shore. Um, we have a population that runs around 7,200 as an average, but the reality is in the summertime months, we have a lot of second homes and we can double our population on a weekend. So our water consumption and demands are very fluctuated. And so we, we really um, started looking at how we can save water um, in the future. Um, 
we have about 4,000 connections and, and up to 75% of the water usage that we use in the summer uh, can go on the ground. Uh, during the, the drought of uh, 2011 through 2016, we experienced uh, a restriction of water. We were seeing uh, the two lakes that feed the Highland Lakes area drop to around 35%. We uh, restricted irrigation back to one time a week. And so we were really concerned over the long term uh, about a limited water supply. So we started taking it very serious that we needed to do some conservation measures that would be effective with our customers to help them change their behaviors. So in our experience, what we noticed is that we, we do have a lot of high customer usage volumes. Of course, a lot of landscapes, three golf courses, and they're lined with beautiful homes and loads of landscape. And so we realized that a lot of people were not really using that like they should have or should uh, maintain. And, and the other thing was, is that we had a policy that if somebody had a leak and proved that they fixed the leak and gave us some invoices that, that things were repaired, we'd give them a significant credit back on their, their water bill. So that wasn't very productive for us. We were losing revenue. And kind of one of the, the biggest things that we had was that we had unproductive service calls related to when a customer, we get a water bill, they would call us up and say, there's no way that we use that much water and there must be something wrong with your meter. And that led to upset customers because 99% of the time that we go out and check the meters, it was in perfect uh, compliance with the 5% uh, that was accuracy that was required on the meter. So it was really mostly, it was the customer's issues. So we really thought about, you know, what were the key things that we needed to help our customers with. And, and a lot of it had to do with leaks on their side uh, of the meters where they have irrigation systems and they would have leaks. And uh, they also had improper irrigation settings. In other words, they sometimes they were set for two times a day. They just didn't understand what they were doing when they were setting the irrigation system. Or on the other side of them, they had somebody maintaining their system and they would up the irrigation flow and then they would get the bill and and call us and complain. Um, another thing, we weren't really having people be in compliance with our uh, drop contingency plan. And so we kind of thought about this, wouldn't it be great for have the customers, if they had some type of gauges or warning lights, let them know if they had an issue or if they were, they were not following the rules like we had asked them to. So we sat back and, and thought about this for a while and said, okay, well, what does an average customer know? Well, they really know very little. When we try our best as a utility to get the information to them and then they get a monthly bill and they know certainly know that. They get it because we hear about it. Because there's no way that they, they could have spent that much water through their meter. Um, and they talk to their neighbors and they would get upset. And, and so it would be a kind of an issue. So we were not really getting out in front and, and discussing things with them in a better manner we should have. We were always getting the city's broke, meters broke. There's no way I use that much water. But what gets their attention, obviously, the high utility bills. Another thing was when we went through the drought scarcity of, of uh, 2011 to 2015, we were asking people to, to be restrictive. They, they understood and they wanted to do their part and that helped. Um, obviously, we talked a bit about the winter storm just a few minutes ago and that really, not their attention because like most other uh, entities in the state, we had some issues with outages during that time. And that really made people realize how important water is. And so we're kind of hoping that that sets the pace for the future. Uh, but either way, all of these things we've done in the past have been all reactive. In other words, it's after they get the bill that they find out this information. And so we, we thought about this and how can we make them be proactive? So we thought about this, you know, what if like in a car, you would have gauges that would tell you if you're getting into trouble, uh, you know, trouble lights or gauges to know how much you're using or how fast you're going. And, and that's indicative of the car, but we don't have that on our water systems to tell our customers so they can manage their own system. So we kind of looked at it and said, okay, that's really what we really need to do and what systems will provide us to be able to do that. But we thought about AMI system and that basically gets down to hourly consumption data 
uh, with the system that we have put in, uh, and it gives us a portal to give to the customers. And so we thought well, this is a good way we can get messages out for leak detections, you know, because that's we felt like that was a big thing about conservation, is we on the utility side do everything we can to reduce our water loss. But on the customer side, sometimes they just don't know that they have a problem until they get that bill. So we have set up a system to do that. So the timeline for what we did on this project is that from 2016 to 2021, we spent putting in an AMI system. We actually started earlier with a, a drive-by system that failed. And so we went to the AMI system and we installed everything in ourselves uh, which took a little longer, but it saved us a lot of money. And then in 2019, we started looking at how we're going to interface with our customers. And, and the problem was that the, the system that we had with the AMI system just did not go far enough from what we really wanted to do. We really wanted to engage the customer and provide them some links to go where we need to go. So we, we met with um, WaterSmart, a, a water a data analysis uh, firm and looked at their software and really thought it was a good software that matched what we need. So we worked with LCRA, <clears throat> excuse me, to get a conservation cost savings grant uh, to help pay for that. And we got a we got a 50% match grant from LCRA. So I, I stress that that's a good opportunity if you live in the, the Colorado River Basin to contact Stacy about that, that process. And then in 2020, we initiated this project and started in April, uh, we went through some test phases to make sure the software matched with our utility billing and our AMI system, because that's how the interface to the two of them, and then uh, start the automatic generation after, uh, if we can put it online in October of 2020. Um, and then this year, we started looking at the water analysis through uh, WaterSmart that gave us uh, analysis to confirm success for the uh, leak detection program. So, so we went about this in October. We went through our test case with our, our test folks that we use for this to make sure we, all the bows work out and that it was easy for them to use and work through those problems. Uh, then we sent out a utility bill stuffer. Uh, we also put uh, information in the newspaper, an article in the newspaper. We put uh, the same page that we have here up on the uh, utility building clerk's desk and ask people to, to sign up. Uh, we created a QR code to go straight to the link and made it easy for the customers to go to this. So for the customers, it was really simple. Um, they would go to the QR code or go to the link. Uh, we send them emails as well. And they click on the link and they go and they provide a current email and a password to get into their, their customer portal. Uh, then they would go to their, their notification selection and they could select uh, what they need to get uh, as far as leak detection. And, you know, because sometimes you don't want, customers didn't want to get notified if it's really low leak, or uh, they, they also could be noticed if they were having a higher water use than they normally have. So when, when the gardener turns up their notification, they would get a notice of that. Uh, that they were exceeding what they expected. And then they would receive these automatic leak notices in uh, both a burst, which is a fast leak, a continuous, which is over a longer period of time, and a high use that's exceeding their expectations that they're getting um, through their, their, their usage. So um, to the left is a picture of their portal that they get through uh, WaterSmart through, through the city of Horseshoe Bay. And uh, this gives them uh, three options, really, uh, well, four, really. There's a home view overview of the, the portal. And then there's their billing side where they can get details of their billing. They can get paper copies uh, that's sent to them. They can go back and look at their history. Uh, they can track their water use down to hourly rates uh, for a long period of time. And they can see what they're doing and what they're using and how that affects them. Then there's a take action area, which gives them recommendations on uh, how to track leaks, how to save water wherever they can. And that's what we're really looking for is to give customers not just a leak detection, but also information on how to solve their issues. Uh, so in this, they would go into their settings and they would set their leak notifications. 
And as you can see, they send it as an email, text, voicemail. There's three different ways they can do that. Um, so they can get our messages we send to them. Uh, like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's winter time. You need to turn your irrigation system off. There's conservation messages. And, and also severe messages, like if we have a bull water notice or if there's an outage in a particular area. So how does the, the system work? It basically looks at the minimum gallons per hour and uh, the, a minimum duration period. So for a uh, single family resident uh, for a continuous leak, that would mean that there would have to be more than 20 gallons per hour for a 72 hour period before this, they would get a notice that they have a leak. Uh, we set that kind of high at first, uh, just to kind of start the process off. We we're planning on reducing that down over time, but uh, we didn't want to get too many leaks out there. You have people complaining about the number of leaks they were, they're getting in the small doses. Uh, and then their burst leak uh, for the same classification of uh, meter class, uh, we are setting it at uh, just under 75 gallons per hour uh, for eight hour period, if that indicates that much time. And you can adjust these, you can set these to whatever you want to, but that's what we, we chose to do. And then they would get a message within 24 hours after that, that picked up that notice. So this would be the uh, notice they would get. Um, it would come in email, text form. It comes a little bit different in text, but this is kind of the, the representation of the leak notice that they would get. Um, in the middle, you can see um, that's a burst leak. If you look down, I don't know if you can see it very good, but there's it's basically hours. Uh, in this instance, is the person that had 2,000 gallons an hour that was going in, in a normal situation. If they weren't living there, and a customer didn't see this, or their neighbor didn't see this. This could be going for a month, and they could have a two hundred thousand gallon water bill, uh, which we have seen here because of the people that don't live here and people come and go, or they would get it in their water bill and scream. Uh, and then on the one on the right, you see continuous. It's like a toilet leak. Uh, it'll go, and you can see that it goes for days, and they'll see that their their usage. So that's how the messages get sent out. So as we're going through this process, we wanted to know how we were doing. So this WaterSmart software tied to the AMI system gives us uh, the message that we send out. So we know that we send out in October about 120 uh, leak detection messages, 150 in November. And you can see as you track through there, um, it also has a graph that shows you how much water was saved. Uh, where customers get in, they react to the leak and they shut their leaks off. In, in actuality, uh, we probably have better savings than this, but this is kind of what we have is tracking it through the software. And then on the bottom, we do get feedback from our customers and we have 100% positive feedback. People are thrilled to death that they can get this message out so they don't have a high water bill. And especially for those that are not here. So what are the milestones? that we've had uh, since we started in October, we sent out 712 leak detections uh, to our customers where we did not have uh, good emails or text or voices on those that, that were sent leak, text, leak messages um, that did not have a contact. We would try to search them down through our staff and let them know that they had a big leak. Uh, but that is one of the things that you have to do is you have to work to get uh, make sure that you have good contact information for your customers uh, because that's how you contact them. And then um, the steady climb of the customers, uh, we're at 20% now since October. So that's six months. We've got 20% of our goals, 50% by the end of the year. And so we're working through a campaign to try to get uh, more people signed onto the system. Uh, we've sent about 8,000 messages so far. Uh, like messages telling people in the wintertime, the probably good time to cut your irrigation system off. And recently we sent one after the winter storm asking people to check their irrigation systems to make sure that they didn't have damage because of the winter storms. They don't find out they have a high water bill or leak after the fact. Um, we've identified about 5 million gallons of potential leaks. Some of those were people filling pools and, and just curtain their irrigation systems on and really dousing their ground. Uh, and they respond back and telling us what, what they had found. 
Uh, and then there, we figured there was through the calculations we saved about 2.1 million gallons on the customer side, not on the city side, but on the customer side. So they really like that as far as it goes. Um, so some of the biggest challenges real quickly, the data integration, um, uh, Julie was talking about a champion. You need to have a champion about this integration process. You need to be the go-between between the data system um, that like WaterSmart for us and the, uh, the, the utility bill is very important. Uh, and the customer commits a change. Uh, the cost of the AMI system is expensive, but it's really good for the customer. So uh, I think we're gonna do questions at the end, but I'm gonna pass it back to uh, Blake and go from here. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for that insight in, into the City of Horseshoe Bay's AMI project and the implementation of your customer portal. Uh, next up, we have uh, Caleb Cranzel, Assistant City Manager with the City of Marble Falls. Caleb Cranzel was appointed to, to Assistant City Manager for the City of Marble Falls in 2016 after having previously served as a director of development services for over nine years. He currently oversees the public works, parks and recreation and development service departments, as well as the downtown coordinator operations. Caleb's passion for municipal uh, government developed out of a desire to change the way government is perceived and to make positive, a positive impact on his community. He's a five-year veteran of the United States Army and holds a Bachelor of Science in Geographic Information Science from Texas State University. Caleb is a certified planner with the American Planning Association, a certified public manager, a member of the Marble Falls Rotary, and is a dedicated coach for his daughter's soccer team. Caleb, if you wanna share your screen. And welcome and thank you for your service. Thanks, Blake. You can hear me? Yes, sir. All right, excellent. Morning, everybody. Appreciate the opportunity to be here today and discuss a little bit about our AMA, AMI project in Marble Falls. Um, I think Jeff's presentation was a great segue into mine, whereas Jeff's, I think, talked a lot about a lot of the benefits, a lot of what the customer sees, what the customer gets. My presentation is more focused, really, I think, on getting in the weeds of implementing AMI and what some of the pitfalls can be, what some of the lessons that we learned from doing this were. Um, our, so our project was funded through the Local Government Code 302 uh, statute, which allows you to um, basically fund capital improvement projects um, through the revenue offset by the savings for those infrastructure projects um, or span out over time as it pays back however much the uh, initial project costs. Originally, our project included lighting, building automation, and uh, AMI, and then the customer portal for water meters. Obviously, is the, that's the big part of the project. Uh, spans multiple multiple city departments um, and across the entire community. For us, why we did it, uh, primarily we did it for water conservation. For a small rural utility, our leadership uh, is really focused on water conservation and trying to improve um, how we're using water in the community, that we're being more sustainable. Um, the next one is utility improvement. So we wanted to reduce personnel, one of the main attributes we wanted is we wanted a real swift transition from mechanical read meters to auto read meters. Um, and then last one was customer engagement. For us, customer engagement was probably the most important benefit to the community. What we wanted to do was um, not just put in automatic read meters because at the end of the day, citizens, I don't think care whether or not their meters are mechanical or whether they're auto. The utility certainly does because there's a lot of efficiency in that. So we wanted an element of the project that the citizen could appreciate the magnitude of the change and empowering them with the customer portal where they have real time or virtually real time information regarding their meter utilization of water consumption. Um, they can set up you know, trigger points to cut the meter off or send out notifications. Well, not cut the meter off, but send out automatic notifications if they're consuming too much, detect leaks, that will be important when we come to 
as we were rolling our project out, because the customer engagement was such a big uh, component of our project, as we got disruption with implementing the customer web portal, it affected our um, our credibility and certainly the product to um, the customers of our utility. Here's a quick overview of our project. So the first, basically the first couple of years were sending out the RFP, selecting the firm we were gonna use for um, the 302 project, if you would, and all the components of it, establishing a contract, then really launching into uh, replacing the meters. The meters were replaced really fast. So for us, we had the meter swap out in four months. Um, which was really fast. Um, and as I come to the tail end, there'll be some, there's some cost benefits to doing it as quickly as we did it. Um, pros and cons, if you would. But then as you see the back half is all relating to the customer portal. Um, first customer portal, second customer portal, and then the My Civic Utilities app. Um, so this kind of gives you a flow chart diagram of how our system works. So our ENCODE is our utility billing software. It talks to Neptune 360. Neptune 360 is the platform that collects and collates the meter information, talks to the gateways. The gateway is the hardware, which then talks to the meters at the house. Then it sends the information back to Neptune 360, then sends it over to ENCODE and ENCODE then generates utility billing and or talks to the customer portal. I will say for anybody embarking on, I'm glad Blake put out the poll he did because with 50% of you not having a customer portal or considering AMIs, this diagram is extremely important for everybody in your staff involved with the project to understand from the onset. Um, there, I would say we were a couple of months into this project with nobody on our team really grasping the magnitude of this chain of events, how all these different software platforms talk to each other. Diagramming early on is a huge benefit to everybody, especially the line employees that really have to understand when things get disrupted, where things can get disrupted. Um, a good thing to point out is any if any of these chains is disrupted, it can disrupt the deliverable, whether it's the information going from the meter to the gateway or the gateway back to Neptune 360 or Neptune 360 over to ENCODE. Any, any one of those changes is disrupted, whether it's a um, software output translation issue between Neptune 360 and ENCODE or between ENCODE and the customer web portal, um, it causes a disruption of the entire system. So getting it online and speaking to each other and making sure it remains efficient is extremely sensitive with uh, the entire project. Uh, for example, with our project, when we installed the gateways, the initial install didn't have lightning arresters. So we had two gateways that got a lightning strike and the gateways went down. So the next month we went to utility billing, that entire gateway that was meant to capture all the meters underneath its purview to collect the data uh, didn't operate. So then we had to, you know, at the last minute, this comes up when they try to generate utility bills, you have to deploy staff to go out and hand read those meters basically at the last minute since the gateways aren't collecting the data. Um, getting more into the web portal side of things, for us, um, our customer portal was water smart initially. Uh, we picked it with the vendor as part of the initial contract. Um, we picked it amongst three that were kind of offered as for us to evaluate and select. Uh, it's a it's really really good user friendly platform. So that, with our customer engagement being our primary focus, um, the utilization or the ease of utilization was our primary means for using it. So as we got up and running, and Water Smart was our first customer portal, um, we spent almost a year trying to get Water Smart to talk to Encode the way it was supposed to, or get the two vendors to get the two to talk to each other the way it's supposed to. Um, long story short, we couldn't do it. It wasn't for lack of trying. I mean, tons of meetings, meetings between ENCODE, meetings between Water Smart, meetings with the Siemens. Um, on my symbology chart there, the, the only workaround we were able to do was 
we were able to extract the data manually from ENCODE and upload it into WaterSmart. The problem is, as you can imagine, that becomes a laborious exercise for employees to auto extract data, upload it, quality control it in the meantime, and then make sure it's populating correctly in WaterSmart. So it's basically a crutch we used to get WaterSmart up and running while we were hopefully working in the background to get it um, functioning and talking to ENCODE basically on an automated basis. So we wanted ENCODE the water meter information on an automated basis to talk to WaterSmart. And that was what our customers expected. Um, so this is what our new, our final kind of arrangement looks like. So after we couldn't get WaterSmart and ENCODE data integration, basically automated data integration, um, we transitioned to um, smart meter and my civic utilities app. So smart meter is a Tyler technologies product as well as ENCODE. So the getting the two talk to each, talk to talk to each other was not a problem at all. Um, communication. So the meters basically upload data every 15 minutes, the gateways, the gateways collate the data once every 24 hours, the information from the gateway or from Neptune 360 is sent into ENCODE and through to the web portal so it populates so a customer can see their water consumption for the previous day. Um, and then every 30 days, the utility billing um, data is pulled from, in, from 360 to ENCODE and then sent to um, process utility bills. So what worked out well for us was the fast install. I mean, we had water the meters installed in four months. So that was extremely positive. Um, less disruptive to the community. The subcontractor blew through and you know did it very quickly. The problem is when you install meters so quickly on the business side, um, how quickly you have to transition operations to accommodate all those meters being changed to MI, AMI is extremely quick. So if the gateways aren't functioning correctly or if some of the meter numbers, like you've, if you have meters that are inputted that are one digit off and they're correct in Neptune 360, but they're off one number in ENCODE, the data is not gonna talk to each other. So working out little things like that over time is something you have to have the personnel and attention to work through rather rapidly because any, any customer is not gonna want their bill off at all, right? Like there's a 0.0, .0 um, expectation that there's 0.0, .0 mistakes in the utility billing. So you have to make sure everything is seamlessly integrated as far as the accuracy of the information that's being captured and then that the information that's being recorded. On the positive side, um, like Jeff had mentioned in his presentation, the major impact is leak detection, particularly on the customer side. Customers are able to really inform themselves as to whether or not they have water leak. Um, if you're, once you train your staff up how to tell those things in the data, customers can call and they can walk them through exactly how to evaluate the data if they're looking at it um, through the customer portal and they don't quite understand it. The accuracy in reporting, of course, is um, really important in that mechanical meters, we all know, have degradation over time. So how much water loss you're having or if they have slow leaks is a major issue with mechanical meters that when you move to AMI, will very quickly overnight um, be eliminated. The catch is for us was giving them the web portal so they they are them empowered to help figure out what the problem is and it's not just calling the utility going oh well my bill went up and it's just because you put a high efficiency meter in with a higher accuracy and now I'm being billed more and the water loss is invisible to the customer right they if they have a slow leak or if they're having water loss on the customer side that's invisible to them unless they have the data to see it. And the customer portal is what you can use to really put that right in front of them so they can see it on an ongoing basis, whether if it's a leak over time, especially. Um, more positives were the ability to assign per, reassign personnel. So eliminating water meter readers was we were able to redeploy those personnel to other departments. Um, water conservation is probably the biggest with that being kind of a strategic objective for us. We're a 100% surface water system. So 
Every gallon that we treat goes through the water plant and out into the system and any way we can conserve, because I think conversation, uh, conservation is a multi-pronged approach. Um, you can't just do it with AMI, you gotta do multiple facets to conserve water in the community. I think we've made good progress in that area. Um, and the last one is probably the biggest bad one is the lost customer engagement. Um, so as we rolled out one customer portal, educated our customers on how to use it, um, and, but it wasn't performing, right? The data wasn't populating the way it was expected. Um, that is a loss of customer confidence because it doesn't perform the way that was promised. And then you launch a second portal, then they have to re-educate themselves on the new one. So with the new one up and running and working seamlessly, um, I think we're improving that area. A um, few lessons learned, information technology collaboration, a lot of the uh, lingo that your, your uh, AMI technicians are gonna use and speak, um, the, your IT department or your IT vendor is going to understand and help uh, help communicate, help everybody communicate, collaborate. Have an in-house project manager, or as Jeff mentioned, a champion. You have to have that. Don't rely on the vendors to drive that conversation. If you're in a utility or a municipality that has multiple departments collaborating, have two project manager or project manager, assistant project manager, you gotta have two or more representatives involved because if you have turnover like we did during the project, it can cause a major disruption. If you lose that one champion from that department and don't have somebody um, in the background. Um, last is ensure compatibility with the link in the customer portal online building. All, early on before you launch and install meters, you have to understand that that element and how those softwares will or will not be able to talk to each other from the get-go. Here we are today. So our meter reads are at 98%. Our water loss is down from 16% to 7 to 8% since the install of AMI. And then our customer engagement is moving in the right direction. And this is probably in closing. Um, for our utility, kind of a five-year snapshot with AMI as an element. So this is our water use trend line and then this is our our million gallons per year retreat so 526 in 2015 and you can see how it's trending down despite the fact that our connections are increasing so we're like most texas utilities we're growing uh, from 3100 connections to 3400 connections over five years but at the same time while that corollary is increasing our water consumption is going down. The amount of gallon surface water we're treating um, is going down. So we're making our water supply last longer. And that is it. I will turn it back over to you, Blake. Thank you. It looks like Blake got disconnected. Let's just give him a minute. While we're waiting for uh, Blake to get reconnected, if folks have questions for our panelists, please make sure to enter them into the Q&A um function there's a little button with some little um two little boxes on there and then we also want to tell you that we will be sending out a link for um an evaluation for the conference that helps us with our planning each year so um keep an eye out for that um we'll be sending that out this afternoon and tomorrow Why don't we go ahead and do a couple of questions while we wait for Blake to get back on, if possible. 
we have our speakers. Is Jeff on the line and Earl? Yes, I'm still on. Yeah. Okay, Jeff. So um, while we wait and and um, and Earl, why don't we um, go ahead and do some of these questions that are coming in while we um, Blake tries to get reconnected. Um, so there's a question: Is anyone using their customer portals for billing purposes as well, where their customers can view and pay bills in the same spot where they see their usage data? We are currently not. We do have um, uh, we do have all very similar system to what the two were presented, but we don't have the ability. It's a separate website uh, for paying. Okay, Caleb. Yes, yeah, same. Okay. Separate website. Is there a way to integrate those into the future? Is that something that's available, or is it really just a platform that gets? that, you know, that the people that do the meters and the integration platforms, you know, they're not thinking about the billing part, which has its own set of complications. Well, I would say the Water Smart Portal does give you access to the billing uh, information. And there is a way, we have a link that goes from Water Smart to our Express Pay, which is our uh, billing payment system. But in the our smart system, it does have the capability of pulling up your, your information on your utility bills. Uh, that, that was part of the issues we had with uh, integrating the two systems, is getting that correct. Um, and, and definitely, uh, like Abel said, that's, that's the hard part is to get them to marry. But under the water uh, smart system, it does have a billing section of that. And um, in a minute, I'll try to figure out how to pull it up and show it. Okay. And, and as technology continues to evolve, can you add on and expand um, the portal and the ways you communicate with your customers or do you have to kind of do a do-over or, or is it additive as more technology is developed? Uh, that's a good question. I know that um, with ours, it's pretty fixed, uh, but uh, I will know that <clears throat> as we go through and we work with a, our both our vendors and our, uh, our customers, we present information or request for information to the developers of the software to assist us in trying to develop technology that's out there. I know we're working on it right now because we would like to have uh, different information about our usage uh, so we can work uh, and I know more about basically about our system and our customers. Uh, and I know WaterSmart is developing ways to look at that from a meter side of the, the usage data. So, yes. Okay. I'm back. Sorry about that. Hey, Blake, you're back. <laughs> I don't I know what happened. Rogue and started doing the Q&A while you were gone. So <laughs> Excellent. Good deal. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll pass it back over to you um, and I'll mark the questions we answered and, um, and you can take it over and this is the joy of the virtual platform and relying on the internet. Oh, so, you gotta love it. Welcome back. So I am Blake Neffendorf. I've been the water resource coordinator for the city of Buda since 2018. Uh, with limited water resources and a rapidly growing community, the city of Buda has been proactive in reducing overall water use through multiple approaches. Uh, Blake is currently overseeing the city's aquifer storage and recovery uh, pilot well project, and in 2019 managed the replacement of all 4,000 city water meters to a new AMI system complete with a water smart customer portal. He is also working to expand the city's reuse water system and also serves on the board of, Alliance, of the Alliance Regional Water Authority as treasurer. Uh, Blake previously spent 10 years working for the Texas Water Development Board in the Groundwater Division. as a program supervisor overseeing the state real-time groundwater monitoring network. So a little background about the city of Buda. We're located 15 miles south of downtown Austin. 
uh, like everywhere else, experiencing rapid growth, uh, a little over 2,000 people in the year 2000, and we're approaching 18,000 and, and ever increasing uh, in 2020. We receive water from the Edwards Aquifer, the Barton Springs segment of the Edwards Aquifer, uh, yeah, the Guadalupe Blanco River Authority uh, from Canyon Lake, which is released down the Guadalupe River. And we are also bringing uh, another source of water from the Carrizo Aquifer in eastern Caldwell County with an, a partnership that is the Alliance uh, Regional Water Authority, just between the cities of Buda, Kyle, San Marcos, and Canyon Regional Water Authority. That will be online in 2023. So a, a little bit of background. Um, the city, we, we installed a, what was called an AMR system, automatic reading system, uh, reading system in, in 2007. Uh, and we had, the, the system was basically failing. Uh, we, 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 it was no longer in production. Uh, we couldn't get any support for our AMR system. Uh, it allowed only a, a few limited amount of reads per day. And we had some dead spots within, within our system based off those radio networks. Uh, and we didn't have a customer portal. So during, during those hot months when, when customers would complain and say, well, there's no way I use that much water. Um, it was really difficult for us to, to provide them with that information to, to, to basically prove up the water use that they, that they had. Um, so as I mentioned, we were, our, our, our system was failing. Uh, we didn't have any water, water meter readers. And so we were having to use our licensed operators to go out and read meters, which is the last thing that you want to do. Uh, we got up to in, in March of 2019, uh, having to do a little over a thousand manual reads per month. Uh, conservative estimate five minutes per read, which is probably took, took a lot longer than that because they're scattered about. Uh, gives you about 89 hours of work. Um, this was taking our guys almost a week to do. We started the installation process in March, and as you can see, they, they rapidly dropped off and our guys were able to go back to uh, operating and maintaining our water system full time and saving us uh, quite a bit of uh, productivity. On a side note there, that, that's our first city well drilled in 1954 and they're doing a, in downtown Buda, you can kind of see the businesses in the background, some cars, uh, that's, they're doing a production test on that well. So the other aspect, like I mentioned with this failed meters as uh, some of them just stopped working, they're me mechanical meters. Uh, so the little graph that you're looking at here is, is monthly uh, billing uh, with uh, thousands of gallons on the, on the left-hand column. And you'll see it flatlined in late 2018 into 2019 when we did this changeover. Uh, so it's, I know a lot of finance people are probably cringing at this number. This is, this is basically lost revenue. So we didn't track any of that water usage. So they were getting charged just the based amount. So we uh, contracted with Siemens, um, who oversaw the, um, the, the kind of the, the implementation of this program uh, along with the city. Uh, so in 2018, they came in and they pulled 70 meters randomly selected from our database and sent them off for third party testing. Those mechanical meters came back at 96.1% accurate. Um, we decided to go with uh, Neptune meters as our, our new meters, uh, which is no moving parts. And there's a guarantee, um, performance service agreement has a guarantee accuracy of 98.5% over a 15 year period. Um, last year is our first year, uh, first full year of implementation. And they came back and pulled around a dozen or so meters and sent them off for evaluation. The accuracy of those meters came back at 99.4%, which exceeded the, the guarantee. Um, and so they, the other calculation that they had with this is that you know they, they took our consumptions, our water rates, and those, um, those accuracies over time and, uh, and came up with a, a realized savings based on implementing these new meters and the, this guaranteed accuracy rate with no moving part meter. Uh, the first year, first year realized annual savings, so billable increase was approximately $167,000. Uh, 
Uh, this exceeded the year one guarantee that, that they claimed that we would see by almost $39,000, which is 30% increase. Uh, over a 15 year period, now this is kind of like the, the, the biggest, the rosiest outlook. Um, you know, if we didn't replace any of our meters and kept the old, old mechanical meters, which have a, a declining uh, accuracy rate over time, never changed them out, uh, we would projected to see a revenue, a revenue increase of around $5 million by, by making this change between the, the two meter types. So, um, as far as the installation process, um, you know, Kayla mentioned before I uh, disappeared, um, having having a, a good champion on our on your side on the on the city side or utility side, which was me, uh, as kind of a go between between engineering, public works, and utility building and our finance staff. So I'm able and dangerous enough to know enough lot about each department, and uh, which re really helped with our with our integration. Um, Engaging your customers is, is key. I have a, a link to our, our AMI page FAQ that we put out, uh, providing all sorts of information associated with this, uh, with this installation uh, progress. We did a, a kind of a how-to before and put that out on social media, how the installation process was gonna go. Uh, next door, we did press releases. We did an interview with KXAN uh, at the start of it and also bill inserts. So the more information, the better. You're gonna have a lot of people that are apprehensive about um, cell phone technologies. And we even had one, one individual that claimed that the meter was gonna end up killing his tree uh, from, the, from the cell phone frequencies. Um, this tree is still alive today so far. Uh, be mindful of your installation timing, if possible. I think, Caleb, they started theirs in January. We kicked ours off in, in March, and we focus on our higher consumption side, the subdivisions that irrigate more. Uh, we, wanted, we wanted that in place because um, we wanted a few months of, of, of data to be able to, to show them, because the, the, obviously they're going to point their finger at, at the new meters. If you did this during the summer months and... and uh, is be a, a lot more of a headache. So uh, that's where we focus on was trying to get our, our higher use areas done during the springtime. Uh, set expectations with your meter installation company. If you're, if you're going that route, um, and if you're gonna do it in-house, site photos, site photos ahead of time before you change them out, um, not only of the meter area, but also of the house in the background. Uh, those come in very handy. And then I and then so before and after uh, installation process, um, we had w one incident where um, a resident had a, a water meter that was turned off. They were selling their home. Um, they had a, a broken valve in their laundry room. Uh, the guys came and changed it out. Nobody was home, um, and they turned the water back on, and it flooded their home. And so after reviewing the pictures before the installation, you, you could see the, the meter clearly being being off in those photos. So uh, meter installation company owned up to it. They were great. Uh, they worked with the land, the homeowner and, and everything got resolved really, really quickly. Um, we also provided them with one page info sheet uh, to hand out to customers if they had any questions. And, um, and also went over the, the installation procedures with, with that installation company just to make sure that they weren't uh, shutting off anybody's water if a meter was moving and, and, and all that good stuff. So on the customer portal side of things, uh, we waited a few months. We, we went live with our portal in July. Uh, we got a, gathered a few months worth of data, uh, had everything checked on our side to make sure that we were comfortable before going live um, with it to, to, our, to our residents. Um, we also installed, uh, like I said, we have groundwater and surface water. So we installed AMI meters on all five of our production wells. So uh, we're getting that hourly data uh, from all of our, our, uh, our water wells. And we just recently installed an AMI meter on our uh, GBRE, our surface water in, intake point. And so we'll have uh, that, hourly that hourly production data coming in and we'll be able to line that up with our uh, consumption data. And so I'm hoping that we'll be able to pinpoint our, our uh, water loss uh, information uh, even better moving forward. So that, that just happened. So um, 
I have to follow up on with, with y'all on that. Um, leak alerts. Uh, so this in, in 2020, we sent out about 2,200 leak alerts through our, our WaterSmart portal. You can see the volumes and the savings estimated from, from those uh, sending out those alerts. Um, and so since going live in, in July of, of 2019, uh, you know, almost 5,000 alerts and, and uh, uh, quite a bit of a leak volume on, on the customer side. So I included a, a percentage columns there um, on the right hand side. And so that's a percentage leak volume uh, compared to our production data. So, so we're seeing roughly 10% uh, of our produced water being leaked on the customer side. And then a savings of, of around 1% of that produced water, just to kind of give you an estimate of, of what we're seeing. Maybe you can correlate to you know, however much you're, you're producing uh, for your system. Uh, feedback has been really positive. Uh, a lot of people like to throw family members under the, under the bus. Uh, husband left the soaker hose on. Uh, toddler accidentally opened the, opened the faucet. Um, and we even apparently shamed one person. They felt really regretful for being wasteful and leaving their hose warning. Water hose and leaving faucets on has been uh, really high. People forget about what they're doing and, and go on to do other things. So. Um, a little bit of interesting information. Uh, one, one note, just to kind of narrow it down. So this is a graph of uh, a, a, a customer who came in um, complaining about high water use and it was pointed the finger at the, the new meters. Um, as you can see, their, their peak isn't really, the peaks are during the summer months when he irrigates more, um, which has been the same from 2017, 2018, and after the switch out in 2019. So there wasn't really much of a difference there. Um, we drilled down, we can actually look at, so this is daily data, you know, he was adamant he only watered twice a week, which was our requirements. And sure enough, he's only watering twice a week. Um, although he's using 3,500 gallons of water each time he irrigates, which is an awful lot of amount of water. So the benefit of having this hourly data is you can drill down even into the day. So now we're looking at the 24 hour period on Saturday and, and there's our answer, Lone Bull, he's, he's watering both in the morning and in the evening. So, which he wasn't aware of. So we were able to, uh, to uh, show this up. He was able to look at it himself and, uh, and make appropriate adjustments to his irrigation system and um, prevent those higher bills from happening in the future. Uh, one thing here recently, so we're, the cities were in stage one uh, drought restrictions, which is um, limited water twice per week. Um, this resident, we, we, so you can get um, irrigation, um, like spreadsheets on, on who's watering and when, um, easily accessed through, through WaterSmart. And so uh, a few of these, Obviously, the ones that were watering a, a lot more than what they should, uh, we sent them just a friendly reminder because it looked like they had just irrigation settings that were that were off. And so we sent them notes. I think I trial run on around ten customers, and we got an immediate re immediate response um, within a couple of days, and and they made those corrections. Um, so it's it's been really helpful as far as uh, from a compliance standpoint with drought without having to to um, be the strong arm enforcement side. So that is my contact information. If you have any, any questions or, or um, want to get with me on our implementation or our, our water smart portal, um, I do have a couple of quick poll questions. Um, so we're going to, we're going to play a game. We're going to find, we're going to see how much that you may know. So this is a leak. Uh, you're looking at a one day period. And uh, the leak starts off at about 250 gallons per hour, and then it increases to over 500 gallons uh, per hour by the time they, they, they are notified and, and have pinpointed the leak. So Marcin, if you'll pop up the poll, we're gonna have, give you some options and we'll see if you can guess which ones may or may not be associated with this leak. I'll try to be quick. 
All right, we can get the results. Toilet is not the right answer. So it was actually a broken water pipe in, in their yard. And, and so that crack started out slowly and then it, it kind of gradually rose um, um, as the day progressed. So one more for you. Uh, and then I just went out of it. So this one, it stays constant. It's about 180 gallons per hour. Um, it, it started right around lunchtime and it went through the night until they were notified the next morning. So Marcin, if you'll pop up the next poll. Good. Same options, toilet, water softener, sprinkler head. They left the hose running. A couple minutes. A couple seconds, I should say. And we'll see the results. Left the hose runnings. It's a good guess. It's a little bit tricky. Uh, this one was actually uh, a toilet related. So it was a toilet leak. Uh, we see quite a, quite a number of these events um, with higher usage, you know, 180 gallons per hour can add up real quick. And, um, so a lot of our links that we see are, are, are toilet related. So with that, I will stop sharing my screen. And we will see if we have, uh, I think y'all answered most of the questions. So uh, real quickly, if I can get Jeff and, and Caleb to come back up, um, I asked them, uh, if you could go back, what, what would you change about anything of your implementation? So what, what would have made, would, would have been more beneficial for your utility uh, if you could go back? Let's we'll start with Jeff. Okay, so I think um, at first, I think like Caleb said, I don't think we were too deep with their, all the departments to understand the uh, interactions of the system. And I don't think that we had to buy in uh, that we needed uh, in the departments. And, and it wasn't until we started to have some issues that I realized that, that there needed to be a true champion to push this factor. And that needs to be somebody that has some, some authority, that was me, to push that to go through. But if I had it to do over, I think uh, I would have a little bit better handle on uh, what the requirements were uh, for the two systems to work and, and negotiate between the two entities, uh, which is the billing system and the, and the, the, the AMI system and the, whatever the data analysis is like water smart. And I would sit down with them and make sure that we had some real good understanding between everybody on what the requirements are. And then I would set milestone timelines and if I could, penalties uh, to make sure that that happened because that was a little bit of a pain for us. Caleb? For me, um, yeah, I think it was the, the depth of the personnel involved in the project, but I, from, from the onset, I think it was getting a better collective understanding of the, um, how many people have to touch the widget, right? So like, and what the widget looks like, like laying out that process chart once a lot of people saw that and understood the various chain of events. But then as Jeff said, sitting down with IT and talking about, okay, this, this uh, platform for us at Neptune 360, it's deliverable is in this format. Is that going to be compatible with ENCODE or and getting down into those weeds prior to signing a contract and really getting the ball rolling that everybody understands a little bit better the steps that have to ensue once the contract signed because once it's signed it's you know everybody's trying to implement as fast as possible i completely agree that buy-in is 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 uh is important and it's something that i'm glad we had 
uh, on our side. Um, I think from a customer portal standpoint, if um, for, or for anybody who's thinking about implementing it, uh, for us, it would be try to grab as many emails and updated phone numbers as, as, as possible. So having that updated information on your customers can be, can be really critical and important for getting those, those legal, out, legal alerts out first. So, so for us, they don't even have to be signed up as long as we have a, a valid number uh, or email, uh, we can push those, those legal alerts to them, um, which, is, which is really beneficial. And also from the standpoint that we saw from you know the, the winter storm providing that getting that information out to, to customers having that updated information is um, is important so you know you get a lot of homeowners that have been been around for 50 60 80, 70 years and you may not have phone numbers on them when 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 that when that, that was done so getting that updated information is is really important but we are out of time I, I apologize for uh, disappearing there for a few minutes, but uh, if you have any questions for Caleb, Jeff, or, or myself, uh, feel free to contact us or, or, or put them in the chat and we'll try to answer them. So thank you guys. Thanks, Blake. Good job.